Linux OTC. Welcome to episode 32. I'm Bill. I'm Joe. And I just got a new hard drive. Look at that. Wait, not what a hard it? drive. It's not a hard drive anymore. What are we, what are we, solid state SSD. It's an Sol- SSD. Yeah. Not a, not a. Showing How my big age. is it, Leo? It's one whole terabyte, Joe. That's huge. It's big. <laughs> so big. God, I can put so, I can put like three modern games on it. Imagine all the flash the videos you could put on that. I actually, None I have the a DLC. Nope, that's right. You get three games, but no DLC. That's absolutely true. Now I have, um, I couldn't fit all of Linux User Spaces Season 4 on one one terabyte hard drive. I had to, about, about halfway through, I had to start moving stuff over uh, to, uh, to my next cloud backup storage storage. How many episodes are you talking there? Uh, about 10 at a time, uh, cause yeah. they're, um, 50 gigs each, but they're, they're not 50 to 60 gigs each, but that's not the only thing I have on that disc. Uh, you running that's, raw? Uh, what do you mean? Raw like, audio? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, waves. Well, uh, Dan records or exports in FLAC. This little Zoom pod track thing exports wave and I don't bother converting it until later. Um, then my videos are about 15 to 20 gigs and his are about the same but he converts down and so do i but um i've made the mistake of hanging on to the original uh video files so i just need to get rid of those and that would save me a lot of space but yeah they're huge man they're huge and i guess they're uh, i have them on my operating system disk that's that's my biggest problem so you got them bigly yeah sure do buddy Bigly. Speaking of audio, I am trying Reaper as a possible. I don't know. I don't want to say replacement for Audacity, but it's a just, replacement for Audacity. Yeah, well, I know. For a lot of people, it is. For and for let's, everything let's that Audacity is. Yeah, for everything that Audacity is doing, Bill is going to be doing with Reaper from now on. But it's not a replacement. I'm not going to make that claim. <laughs> 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 Took me this long to learn just what little I know about Audacity. Yeah, kind of. It's it's hard to move to anything because I'm I'm stuck in Caden Live Land, right? Like I've wanted to do DaVinci Resolve for a little bit, but I have to learn a whole new workflow. I have to learn new keyboard shortcuts. I have to learn new everything. And then there's also this uh, this thought of should I spring? And buy the two three hundred dollar DaVinci Resolve keyboard to make everything better and nicer and faster. Mm, that'd be a, that'd be a consideration. Not that I would do it now or anytime soon, but um, yeah, it would be a consideration. Well, what does I, I, I've often been curious because DaVinci Resolve. I don't know. I've never really been able to get it to work all that well. What what do you get with a piece of software like that that you don't get with something like uh, no crashes? That's Is that the a idea. problem with with Caden Live? Every now and then, I mean, and I do a lot. Like I have uh, three audio tracks and something like five video tracks at the end of a Linux user space editing, um, and so the show itself goes about an hour and a half. So there's that, and multiple multiple cuts because I do the bulk of the audio editing in Caden Live. So there's tons and tons and tons, and then. So like the front of the show, which runs about uh, 30 minutes to an hour, that gets chucked out to the side. Then any any kind of like 30 second to a minute cut that I'm like, ah, maybe we'll put that out later. Uh, I'll put that off to the side too. So I mean, the track itself is like five hours long and with stuff, you know, just uh, sprinkled in between. But I rarely, I mean, we're talking once every three edits, um, I'll see any kind of crash or anything like that. So it's not often, and I don't know what folks are doing to make it crash, but it doesn't crash on me that much. But it does. It it definitely does. Hmm. I've only I've only done the the little bit here and there with with video editors. Most of the time, the only thing I use one for is to clip off just a little bit at the beginning, and right. and if the recording carries over past all of our goodbyes. And I, I use I use a Vitamux for that, which if you try to install that little piece of software from the repo, I've not been able to get it to work. But if you install the flat pack, it works. So it must be trying to use an old library or something. But it's got 
it's about as simple as it gets for a video editor. Yeah. And no, I'm pretty that, sure I've used Caden Live before. I've done video editing before. It's just been a really long time since I did it. And all I can remember about it was it being extremely tedious. That's just video editing, though. That Yeah, video yeah. editing being extremely tedious. Yep. I mean, every every little title, every single transition, every every cut, every everything has to be done by hand. There's some automation to some of it, but my God, yeah, it is it is tedious. It's very tedious. The way that I look at it, though, is that um, I had to do this in Audacity when I was just doing an audio show anyway, and um, you, it's the exact same process in Caden Live, at least for when I'm ready to push out the audio part. And then I'll go in one more pass and add in titles and transitions and, and everything else, which takes maybe another hour, uh, two hours if I'm, you know, bringing in a ton of stuff. Because we have a lot of overlays. Like, we'll talk about something, and then I'll have, like, if it's like a huge web page, I'll have it scroll past while we're, while we're talking about it. Um, or if it's, uh, like, if we're describing a logo, I'll have that come up on the screen or something like that. Um, if I have a lot of that in a show, it gets real tedious, takes a long time. But yeah, I mean, just the whole process, just all of this. I mean, even, even, uh, Bill, like you don't go in and, and like our, when we talk over each other, a lot of that still stays in. Um, cause it's just me and Dan, I want everything to be heard. So I'll go in and like mute the other, if we're talking over each other so we can hear. Um, yeah, I try but even, to, I mean... It, it really depends. On Mintcast, I, I do a little bit more than I do on this show because yeah. it's um, part of the time. Like, I don't do it at all on Three Fat Truckers. And, and a lot of that, unless it makes it, like, unintelligible. Yeah. A lot of that is just because I'm trying to capture some personality. And, the you know, the I, I want the experience of real Sometimes the talking over each other shows it, what was going on at the time. Yeah, it's yeah. organic. Oh, you yeah. Know? And that was part of the thinking behind this show in general is that I wanted it to look like just some guys sitting and talking about Linux, you know. So there's there's times when it's appropriate, but then there's times when it just gets it really takes something from the from the conversation because people are just they're not listening to the other person. They're just they got something to say and they got they want to hurry up and get it out before they forget, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like ums, right? Like, um, oh, yeah. I, I leave a lot of them in there, but there are ones where, you know, when you say um for the third time in a row, that's just distracting. So, so you know, I'll, I'll, I'll rein those in. But other than that, um, I leave them in. Yeah. The lip smacking at the beginning of a sentence, too. That's Oh, a, yeah, I take, the, I take that out. Yeah. I that. try to, and <laughs> I've gotten to where I, I can see them. I, oh, I yeah. know what I'm looking at now. Yeah. That's that's one thing you get with audio editing that um I don't think you kind of go you don't expect to be able to do that but at the end of it you can actually hear you see on the waveform what people are saying sometimes yeah. um because like you'll it, it's different for everybody but if you edit the same person's audio over and over and over again you you're going to see some patterns and you'll be like yep I know exactly what he's saying right there Well and it's pretty easy now that. to recognize somebody saying zero Yeah yeah right <laughs> Because <laughs> you got three, three, two, one, and you know it's always Moss too. So I'm, right. I'm able to, I'm able to pick it out pretty easy. Yep. But I've, I've, I've found that the thing about, and I don't know if it's Audacity or if it's Linux. It might be Linux, or if it's just dealing with audio in general, especially on a three-hour show. You can line up the tracks in the beginning. And then by the time you get an hour in, it's all just decayed one way or the other. Yeah, it's a Linux thing. I had yeah. done long recordings on Windows and long recordings on Mac OS, and that, that didn't happen. On the same version of well, Audacity, that didn't happen. Now, on Linux only, because uh, I don't usually mess around with the other ones. I, I've seen people experience drift if they're, like, changing their audio settings partway through. Yeah. Or if, it, depending on the style of mute that they use, like if you're using a hardware mute that is on your device, then that just won't have any effect. But if you're using a hot key and it's um, going to the system, it'll somewhat depend on, on the system, but that can cause a little bit of a drift. Right, right. Yeah, I, and I usually don't do that. Like once I get it set, it's set, and I don't really think about it, mess with it anymore. 
Um, I just focus well, on the show. I, I live with, um, what's the word? Um, midgets. <laughs> midgets. And, and they can get kind of loud. So I try to hot mute. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that. Um, but yeah, and that was actually part of the reason why I was like, oh, look at this Zoom pod rack. That's a thing. And I could just totally remove out the operating system from the mix altogether and just use a hardware device um, that stores everything on an SD card. So eh, it was nice. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice escape. I don't have to deal with it anymore, at least on the recording side. I, have to, I still have to deal with Audacity on the uh, editing side because... I think Audacity still, even compared to DaVinci Resolve, even compared to Reaper, has the absolute best noise remover on the market. I've not seen anything do any better because you're talking like dirty audio, like this dryer that's going to that's that's going to have to be taken out. And Moss always tended to have weird audio that uh, that trucks, was usually trucks in yeah. the background for his. Yeah, my those I would with, manually remove. My, my problem with Moss is the his microphone picking up his headphones and oh yeah i'm just gating it out at this point because he's yeah i well, know he's got his microphone i said way up here like this and yeah it's gonna pick up your headphones oh interesting you know i know i sent him open backs but they still shouldn't even be like picking up that much on his microphone oh yeah i use the uh the middle type um n not open back not closed back but there's like a middle type uh, I, I use that. A, a nice pair of Sennheisers. And, yeah. 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 I use uh, whatever that middle type was. There were AKG something or others, but yeah, it just bled into the mic way too much. Closed back is the only way to go. When you're this close to the microphone, if you're using a condenser, I mean, I guess he would probably still pick that up though. So yeah, it's just that it's any noise. It's not I guess. a huge problem. I gate it yeah. out. And I'm no, I'm not even gonna say anything to him about it now because I know it's. I'll find some close backs for him. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's fine either way. It was always fine when I was doing the uh, the editing too, just simply because like I saw it as a challenge. Like how how clean can I get this? Well, that should be a noise gate thing. Yeah. For... When he's that's... not talking, yes. But if if there's crosstalk or whatever, you'll pick that up and there'll be a third version of a voice in there. There is that. Um, right. Well. He's really good about muting his mic. He is, yeah. He always uh, was. He's probably the best at it of all of us. Yeah. So it's not it's not an ongoing problem throughout the whole throughout the whole mix, which you know that that makes it good. I, everybody seems to have a unique thing, and I've been I've actually paid for a couple Audacity courses. Um, Did they work? They are working. I'm the next one I'm going for is. Well, the next lesson I'm going for is how to use the EQs because Mintcast is unique just because of how many people are on Mintcast and how many different registers we have going on at the yeah. same time on that show, which means there's different microphones, different background acoustics, and if you're trying to make something cohesive, you've got to use different techniques on all of those waveforms. And it's, it's, it's a challenge. Like you said, it's a challenge. You can in, mm. It can be enjoyable if you understand what well, you're up against and you know, what tools to use. Um, for example, uh, Joe's got a much deeper voice than most of the guys on there. And his audio, good or bad, tends to be a little bit more muffled. Um, you hear that, Joe? Your audio is because, muffled. well, I mean, the microphone's far away from his face. It's because my voice is so deep. <laughs> but it's, no. I mean, the, just the register and then the way that microphone is different from everybody else's microphone. Yeah. It means I've got to put different EQs on it. And well, hopefully um, the Q2U, if you do send me one, will That'll uh, be interesting. adjust that. I was going to actually make that joke, which is, Bill, how come you haven't just sent everybody a cue to you and then right. just been done with it? That way, there, is that a little less muffled? It is, but look, look at you. You know, that's a little... Right. <laughs> it's like a lollipop. You're not going to be able to mute it so easy like you're No, he can with his tongue. One. He can actually mute it with his tongue now. Look at this. Uh, oh, he did it. You're going to have to 3D print something for your mute button or something. I don't know. No, it's just a wire hanger. You just put the hanger, and then you put it to your tongue, and you can just go click with your tongue. So and turn it on and there's off. that, and then I've got, um, like, Eric has... 
<laughs> there you go. Now work on it so you can be faster. Um, Eric's got a lot of uh, sim, sim. What do you call that when you got a lot of s's? Sibilance. C's, sibilance in his uh, speech, which has to be dealt with delicately too. You know. Well, which, you just chop off like above ten k, don't you? Yeah, in that, that part of it. You know, but that's that's something. If I try to do that with Joe's, it'll make him real muffled. You know, so right? It's, everybody's yeah, so got you, a little different. Right, and that's where I think like Reaper Audacity is getting it now. But I think that's where Reaper and DaVinci Resolve and all these other editors that that do that in place audio, whatever. Like that, it's not yeah. permanent. You know, uh, where those come in really, really handy because the DSer will just apply to the whole thing, and then if there's a portion of it that you don't like, you can always come back. You know, after an hour of editing, you can come back and be like, not here. That sounded weird. Yeah. Um, but that's that's something that I think you're going to have to get out of Audacity because they're adding all of that stuff now. All of these, um, you know, before it literally wrote it to disk, so there's no going back if you make that change, and then an hour later you just stuck with it. But now they have the plugins, the VSTs and stuff, that you can uh, you can apply it and it's not permanent. You can take it off, test it, remove it, move it, however you want to do it. So, is it, does the course that you're taking cover some of that stuff, or is it the older plugins? Well, they're right now they're dealing with um, like the one course I'm taking. He actually, oh gosh, you can get plugins from him and you can get macros, which uh, he's got some really cool macros that just. He made this macro to fix this particular problem, this macro to fix this problem, and you can up, you can actually send him your audio, and he'll recommend what plugins and macros to use. The problem with macros that other people build is that you really don't, you're not learning anything, really. Yeah. You're just you're just using a tool that somebody else perfected, you know. And well, hold on, wait a minute. You're describing the entirety of IT right now. So <laughs> stop doing yeah. that. Yeah, and I'm I'm this weird kind of person that wants to understand what he's doing. DevOps people writing us yeah. email right now. How dare you? <laughs> because one of these days we're going to be left with nobody to fix our problems for us, and we're gonna we're gonna be screwed, and it'll be just like the butler. That's what ChatGPT is for. Oh, oh, that's yeah, right. That's what it's for. Yeah, ChatGPT will soon become the amalgamation of all human knowledge, and then we'll just ask it. And then, you know, generations removed, they won't remember what it is. They just know it's a box that gives answers. And, and then, then they'll that, have our... Isn't that Butlerian a plot to a movie Jihad. I watched? Probably. Yeah. Uh, Probably. What was it? Um, Idiocracy? Hey, listen. Well, man. it's part of the, the whole premise behind Dune is that human beings became so hopelessly dependent on computers that they were made outlawed completely to some it's, degree. It's also the plot of WALL-E. So, you know, d d we, we don't know which thread we're going to go down. We just know we're picking one. Well, eventually. I don't want to be no 400-pounder, so... I mean, you know, whenever you you just get chairs and they take you anywhere, it's basically you get you got a charismatic guy saying, look, it's the Tesla of chairs. And then you I'd, hop in a chair. I'd and almost you never rather have to... be a brain in a box. You know, honestly, I was I was thinking about that. But if you were a brain in a box, that means that you could put your brain in a cybernetic body. Exactly. That's that's I think that's the best future. Put me in a cybernetic body. Give me some cyberpunk. Maybe I can deal with the dystopian future if I can have interchangeable robot bodies. If I could do cool stuff. If I could like. No, you know, you're capped, at, of, you're capped at five feet. That's it. You can't I, I see, oh. I see your Steam Deck there in the background. Oh, nice buddy, way to say uh, I run Arch without saying I run Arch. That's right. I run but, Steam Deck um, OS. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you tried out Ghost Runner? No, I haven't. I haven't on, tried any. It cool was games. on sale. It was on sale for like nine bucks. I don't know if it still is or not. Oh, the Steam sale is going on right now, everybody. If you if you're listening to this before Jan July what tenth or something, something, the Steam sale is currently going on. So look, if you have a game that you want to play, it's on sale right now. Look, it, it's Cyberpunk meets Ninja. Okay. Okay. Hold Cyberpunk on, I gotta look this meets up. Ninja meets uh, parkour. Parkour. Ghost Runner is eight ninety nine. Yeah. So look That's at that. Oh, the complete edition is twenty three ninety nine. Oh, well, you don't need the other ones. The add-ons, they're they're. Oh, that's a lot of. Play yeah, the main okay. game first. Okay, hold on. This is one of those cinematic trailers. What and you the, can. I hate you can get those. the demo is, too. 
Oh, that's cool. What does the game look like? Show me the game, Steam. Oh, okay. Oh, it's first person, dude. I'll throw up. First person platformer. <laughs> yeah. Really? Dude, there's some yeah. stuff you got to do to make sure you don't get motion sickness while playing this game. It's sad, dude. Like, um, the only first person shooter I can play right now is Fortnite. Luckily, that's what my daughter likes, so I play Fortnite. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, had picked up a Humble Bundle and, yeah. It was uh, in the Humble I'm, Bundle? I'm gonna... No, 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 no. Um, I picked up a humble, humble bundle on top of that. My daughter got it for, ah, for Father's Day. So nice. High on life. Um, the Atari emulation, the Atari 50 year emulation stuff. Is that one still available? What's this? Uh, it was oh, a $25 no. humble bundle. I don't know if it's still available. They might be depending. Do you remember what it was called? No, I don't. Hold on. Let me. I have this crazy thing in front of me called um, a computer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. That's what I'm trying to look. But it wasn't the Outfits, Adventures, and Best Friends Forever that comes with the Peppa Pig and uh, My Little Pony one, right? Oh, no, that is the one you got. Nice. Perfect. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, it comes with Bratz? Spirit the Horse? Rainbow High? Oh, my God. It's got the JoJo yeah, Siwa that, Worldwide Party that, that's, in there. That's, that's the one for me. I knew it. I knew it. I don't really care about what they it. say. I'm gonna come Sitting back like a boomerang from the round table while True you guys special are special humble about bundles. Gaming. Okay, high on life, hmm. bread and Fred, Mech Warrior, and Atari Fifty. That's close to what I had. I don't guess that one's still available. How sad. Whoa, Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind Game of the Year Edition is available. Oh, on a humble bundle right now. There's a whole bunch of different versions of um, the Skyrim one. Mm -hmm. With like all the indie stuff that, you know, um, they sued for and got. Oh, <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> yeah. That's always the best way to acquire stuff. Just sue people and take it. Okay, here it is. Um, the seven game IGN Live Humble Bundle, PCDD, High on Life, Atari 50, Bread and Fred, Grindstone, Mech Warrior 5, Mercenaries, uh, Revival, Recolonization, Soul Slinger, Envoy of Death. I'm interested in playing that one. Bummer. Now, the latest. Um, Offer the, ends 6 24 so yeah. Yeah, just ended. Dang. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the last one I bought was the Ninja Turtles um, book bundle with all the, from 1 to 150, the comics, uh, and then the last run. In. First so run? If, uh, no, this would have been the run that started in like 2002 or 2006 okay. or something. It is the one that kind of went alongside the, um, the animated series that came out in like 05, something like that. Well... I, I've heard good things about the Ronin series. Dude. Dude. If you have any interest in the turtles at all, um, you need to you need to read The Last Ronin. It Man, is I'm sad so... and exciting and OMG all the like there there are there are quite a few points where you if, if especially if you're not as familiar with the series, uh where you gotta oh my god, you know. I'm still trying to, to finish up uh Spider Man twenty ninety nine, so Mm hmm. I like so, um, Miles Morales. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so that Steam Deck. Well, Miles is cool, but he's still not the first Hispanic Spider Man. Oh. That's Miguel O'Hara. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. So that Steam Deck's been out a while now. Is that a yep. device that has aged well? Or... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just yeah, keeps yeah, I think so. Better. I'm, I'm doing live streams with it now. Um, so I. Uh, okay. The, one of the downsides of the Steam Deck is you can't mirror, at least not. Like by default, yeah, you have to go to the desktop and then use the KDE and then you can mirror the screen. Well, and stuff. no, um, but you you can set it up with uh, what is it, um, sunshine and moonlight, right? But this is what I'm saying, like out of the box, it okay. doesn't it doesn't okay. screen mirror unless you go to the desktop mode and then just use well, KDE plasma to do the screen mirror. You you could also use Steam Link. Uh, no, no, you can't, because that's there's lag involved, and I'm far away from the access point, so I I would get the worst of it. Okay. Um, but instead, what I do is I just use a capture card. Well, I plugged it into the capture card, and then I realized that the Steam Deck screen goes blank when you do that, because it doesn't do mirroring. So now I bought a uh, a little portable screen, 
So the Steam Deck goes to the, the, the capture machine and then passes through to the monitor. So I play the games off of this, but plug into the Steam Deck to, with a controller or something. But um, it's, it's really good. Uh, I was playing Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars, yeah, Guild Wars 2. I don't know why I wanted to say Guild Wars 2s, but uh, Guild Wars 2 for a couple hours. And, man, not a single stutter other than uh, loading because of Internet. It was it was very nice, very good. I've yet to buy one because I just don't, I say I don't have time. But I find I that surprising. Well, there was well, something to buy and you didn't. Oh, <laughs> No, well, what did I? I told you to buy something else, Bill, and you said you didn't have the money for it. Oh, the, the Mac ROG, Mini. the ROG Ally. Um, if I, yeah, well, I haven't even looked for one. I my only interest in the Mac is the oh, Asahi right. project, but uh, right, yeah, but you know what the difference is? The the Mac Mini is probably going to cost you a couple thousand, and and the no. Steam Deck. E- 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 even like the the five twelve is only going to cost you like three hundred and fifty. Yeah, uh, unless you're buying brand spanking new, you can get a fantastic Mac Mini for under a thousand bucks. Like, oh, okay. I mean, you can get sixteen gigs of RAM, uh, five twelve uh, gig SSD built in for something on the. Yeah, like but then you six, still own a Mac. Yeah, and I need a bigger reason to own. You know, it was than coming. Curiosity. Bill. Well, there's nothing I need to do in a Mac that I can't do with QuickMU. I mean, how do you get your self-respect back after that? <laughs> you, don't. you don't. Apple has it. Right? You sold it to them. That's right. That's right. No, You yeah, paid them yeah. to take it. That's the that's the one I was going to say. They took yeah, it, they, they're going to sell it back to you after they get their 30% off. The yeah, top. well, no, they right. sell it back to you in the, uh, in the iCloud subscription that you oh, have to buy. Oh, you have to keep yeah. paying for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please and thank you. Please and thank you every month. Yeah. Full disclosure, though, I do have a Mac OS Quick Emu thing going, and it at first I, I couldn't get sound working, but now I've got. You're that emulating. Work. You're emulating yeah. a Mac. Well, yeah. I mean, it's virtualizing the Mac, basically. Yeah, yeah I mean, but the I guess the hardware is not Apple hardware, so it's you're not, gonna you're gonna have to tinker. I just I've got too much stuff. I need to. I might get. I might start getting rid of a few of these things to make some space because it's and trade to... in for a Mac Mini. Oh, oh the, my, my wife went out today and she found me this um, Palm uh, folding oh. keyboard. Whoa! So it's actually made for a Palm Pilot. And just on my research today, I was able to find a project where you could pick up. Um, a dev board um, and a couple of switches and some wires and turn it into Bluetooth. So, huh. yeah. So that means I'm you can turn anything into Bluetooth. Well, yeah, with some modification. I mean, it is serial. It, it's modified serial. Mm-hmm. So it, it's technically a serial output to Bluetooth. And I'd love to be able to convert like any keyboard into a Bluetooth keyboard because, you right. know, I, I don't know if it would be a good idea to do it with, you know, a Razer, what is it, Black Widow Elite, but yeah. it's still is that be a the fun one project. With, is that the one with the two USBs because it needs one whole entire this, thing for power? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, it's not for power. It's actually uh, passing through. It, it's basically oh, an USB extension hub. cable to the to the USB. I see, I see. And then it's also got a 3.5 millimeter that comes out of it. So once again, it's just an extension cable yeah. for a 3.5 millimeter. You're going to have to get like a 30,000 milliamp battery just to be able to run it for about six hours. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm I'm okay with also turning it into um, a, a USB power bank. I mean, there's all that space on the inside. Yeah. Now that would actually be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But it would just be heavy as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, It'd be it's br- already heavy as hell. <laughs> it's already heavy as hell. But yeah. no, I, I picked I picked up uh, this keyboard and then one of the ultimates that has the the two USB slots for the hub. Uh-huh. Um, I picked up each of those for about like twelve dollars or something. Nice. So like next to nothing. One of them's going to end up as a Christmas present to somebody once I, once I'm done cleaning it up. But uh, oh, you're too nice. Thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, you, do you really want one, Leo? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I have this problem where I just keep buying crap, 
shipping to you is a whole lot easier and probably cheaper than than shipping to to Moss. Yeah. Well, I figure I figure instead of shipping it, we just go have fajitas somewhere. You see, now you're talking my language. Mm, that's the why aren't we thing. going to get fajitas? That is, I don't How know. How far away are you guys from each other? About three uh, hours. Yeah. Three ish. Mm, I'd make the hour and a half drive. Well. Mm -hmm. For me, it would probably be closer to a two-hour drive because I do have to get through Dallas first. Yeah, yeah, traffic. Yeah, that's that's the thing that nobody ever plans for, right? You try to go somewhere in Dallas, and it's like, don't forget the extra 30 minutes to You're actually You're only 20 get there. miles away. Yeah. Oh, it's still an hour drive. Yeah. Shit. A lot of cities yeah. are like that, especially right now. Uh, it's because we don't make them walkable. It's, I'm surprised it's anybody's willing to go outside right now, considering oh, yeah, the not, freaking not temperature. Hundred, the only a hundred. It looks like it's only a hundred, but it's like nine hundred percent humidity out there. Oh, it's like God. breathing swamp. Yeah, I've got a good. I've got a customer in. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're the customer or I am, but uh, they're down in Houston on the port there, and when it's sixty degrees in Houston. They're out in front of the docks, huddled around a burn barrel, uh, burning trash or boxes or something like that, trying to stay warm when it's 60 degrees. And here yeah. I am running around in a short sleeve shirt and sweating. Well, the EU is talking about their massive heat wave and people potentially dying from heat exhaustion. And then you do the conversion and it's like 80 degrees yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like 80 and really? humid is is pretty brutal though man well, 80 like be, 85 and humid is my limit look uh, i don't start crying until it feels like it's 105 okay hold on but but cue the other so people are type frantically typing emails uh but it's a dry heat oh I this isn't no dry shit. heat <laughs> not here not here there is, is there is such a thing today. as dry heat though the first time i went to phoenix i could not it, it it's weird because i got in the truck in texas and that particular day it was 47 degrees this was long time ago long 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 time ago yeah um and i got out of the truck in phoenix and it was 127 degrees but there it is wow. it was dry heat i could feel the top of my head cooking and it was back yeah. when i had brown hair and um, but I well, that must have been a really long time ago. Long time ago. Okay. No, he just dyes it. He dyes it. <laughs> yeah, I dye it this color. I, yeah, yeah. He has a silver <laughs> fox subscription, and they just That's sent it. him the yeah. But yeah, you, you're not uncomfortable because you're not your body is not like accumulating the moisture on the top of the skin like you would in high humid areas, but. You're in just as much danger, and I would argue more danger because you're. Most of us are used to dealing with heat there, with our comfort level, you know. And if you're not if you're not uncomfortable, you're not dealing with it. But you are still sweating. It's just evaporating instantly into the yeah. air. Yeah. So I lived I lived in El Paso for like 17 years, and it was one desert after another while yeah. i was there and even you know before that I, I i'm used to being in hot places and i'm used to it being dry but this this, this uh, i just feel slimy living in, in a place this humid and this warm yeah it's 40 it's 44 percent humidity where i'm at so it's not terrible and it's only 90 something it's going to be 96 it'll and be 100 later it's probably like 50 or 60 percent humidity here yeah. right now and that that still sucks oh yeah we're, you'll get sticky pretty quick out there we're about 78 percent humidity right now Ooh. and we're not that far behind you heat -wise. sorry for anybody that doesn't like the word moist but i oh, bet yeah. bill's a little moist right now i went out to the liquor store today Indiana's to get water stores um to get white claw White Claw. And well, you gotta wait. To get, you no, you were you were right, Leo. He went and got water. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. is this is so I could have something to drink while we're making the shows, and then I've got the Reds, Wicked, the the nine percent stuff to drink while we're doing Mintcasts. So oh you wow! Look, you got that to look forward to. Feeling really good on Mintcast, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I walked outside. See, the thing is, people don't realize when you live in air conditioning, when you're used to like climate controlling your whole life the or surface, have a basement oh that too but the 
I've got duct work down here. I've got all the same heat and air conditioning as they do upstairs. And in fact, it'll it'll sometimes overcool the basement. That's why you'll see me wearing gloves in the summertime down here because it gets it gets a little bit nipply. Man, I would I love wish that. I had a basement. Yeah, I love. They that. don't have basements here. No, really. No, too much clay, too much shift. Your basement would die. Oh, we got clay up here. Mm. Well, too, I, I don't know about too the high though. a water table here. Yeah. Mm. But you go outside when you've been in air conditioning all day, and you've got the, the surface of your skin is cool relative to the ambient temperature. and It almost it, immediately feels like all the air is being sucked out of your lungs because of the there's temperature that, change. And then, but all of the moisture just e- immediately forms, condensates on your skin, and you, you feel like it's even hotter than it really is, you know. And that's that was the sensation I got when I went to the liquor store today. So. Ooh. I made it there and back in 17 and a half minutes. <laughs> well, this year, we, we know it's going to be a hot summer, but um, I, I'm having the air conditioner turned down, so the temperature is a little bit higher. It's going to be 78 for a while and 80 for a while, simply because I don't want $500 electric bills. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be rough. So it's no one gonna... in my house is going to be happy about it. But... Nope. No, you just need to screen the outside of your house, though. And that way, it'll block a lot of that sun, and keep your house cool. Yeah, I was actually thinking about getting some um, some insulation or some reflective insulation, and then just yeah. blocking off all my windows. Dude, the, the get, for the get there's a there's a UV thing, uh, UV like it comes in a roll, and you just like spray water on your window and then put them up. Dude, those things, I I have one of those um, little temperature guns that that do right, uh, and when on the hottest day last year or two years ago, the sun was coming in and whatever was on my floor, I I did a temperature on that and it was like 120 degrees, 130 degrees, something like yeah. that. No. And then I put the uh, I put that stuff up, tested Send me a it link. again. Okay, yeah, well, um, that stuff the the sun was coming in. I did the temperature and it was something like 88 or 90 degrees. I just use heavy duty tin foil, like like. Uh... What is it? Well, Reynolds wrap. And... I mean, yeah, oh, well, but I've actually, some... I still want to look outside. Yeah, well, you can't do that, but it it <laughs> it makes such a difference. But the cool thing is, uh, is that um, uh-uh. it's reflective. So yeah, from the outside, it, it right. just looks like the it's reflective. So you know, you you're you're losing heat that way too, but you can still see out. So it's just also, it's a nice tint. I've got a seventy degree pitch roof, looking directly at the sun with, and it's completely flat. Yeah, put foil and up there. You can't see no, out of there put anyway. Solar panels up there, oh, true, and true. run run my air. <laughs> but but foil paper costs a lot Look, less than solar panels. Yeah, and yeah. I don't trust the electric company out here when it comes to people putting up solar panels and things. I mean, I understand right now there's a lot of uh, subsidies that'll help you get put up there. But in a year or two, I see the electric companies just tacking on fee after fee after fee to anybody that does have solar panels. So that way they're paying just as much f- f- to be hooked up as well, they, they would be. do they need to know about it? I mean, what, what, how well, this they... is what They've done this in the past. That's the whole thing. Well, it's, it's about tying it to the grid. If you don't tie it to the grid and yeah, just run something any... off of it, then yeah. you'll, be, you'll be better off. But that means that you're, you're going to need battery well, packs and things like that to keep it going whenever you have a cloudy day, which doesn't happen a whole lot to, right no, now. They, they used to allow that. But they no longer allow you to not have your house hooked up to some kind of grid. Otherwise, no, the, they will the house your can be. Home. The house can be. You just have a whole separate circuit running off mm. of those solar panels. Don't run your house off the solar panels. But run if you're something. required, if you're required to be hooked up to the grid, then they can charge you those hookup fees if you're not using enough electricity because you have solar panels. Right, but that's the thing, right? Like, well, is how do they know you're not just not home? You know, what's the difference between? You not using the electricity because you're not there, or you're not using electricity because you're you're. Well, they they're send gonna, somebody by to check your meter. No, they're gonna charge you a, an absolute minimum, even if you fall underneath whatever. I'm Ooh, sure right. that's in the fine print somewhere. Like we'll charge you fifty dollars a month or something like whatever it is. But if you run if you run a fridge off of solar panels, you'll be okay because even if the I mean in Texas, 
you're not going to have day after day after day of, of cloudy days, right? No. So you're going to end up, you know, even if that fridge shuts off for a day, you'll probably still be okay as long as the thing is well insulated and fairly new, right? I mean, doesn't leak a lot of cold air. Right. You'll probably be okay. But, I mean, just don't tie that circuit into the rest of your house to be tied to the grid. No, That's when how you get around that. Well, I mean, you know, you, they might be a little melted by the time you get to it if you're running it like that. No, but I that's, want ice cream. That's why you bring in those those batteries, like the massive batteries, the to massive, run it. Massive ten thousand dollar Tesla batteries, or I, I mean, think they're three thousand dollars now. Right, but if you want to avoid tying that to the grid, then this is how you're going to have to do it. You have to run an entire circuit or two or three off grid, and then the rest of your house. Man, if if I could generate enough power and store enough power to do that with my just just my air conditioners that would save me a shit ton of money yeah yeah the acs i think you're gonna have real problems with because i don't think you can store enough with that but the other stuff the constant stuff the stuff you can plan for like a fridge or fans or stuff like that then absolutely i mean it would be easy to do something like that but again you know, don't don't go into this without any kind of electrical training or anything like that. You you'll die. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go I don't play with mains. I, yeah, I, I no, don't, I don't play with mains. I only play with 100, 120 volt. That's it. That's it, man. Because otherwise, I'm gonna kill myself. So yeah, I don't want to do that. 220, 240, absolutely not. <laughs> I really don't like playing with 120 either. I don't even like looking at the the dryer outlet because it's like mm -mm, that one can kill me. What I don't like is when I think that I've killed the power to a 110 uh, get the little beeper fixture. thing dude yeah it I costs know, ten dollars and you know, it'll go -li 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 if it's know, got power in running a to it hurry and you nope, just no no absolutely not bill don't look, be in a hurry look, when you're playing you're with never electricity in a hurry when you're playing with mains there okay? you go there you go and you yeah. wave the little wand and, and and if there's somebody else in your house while you're playing with mains i highly recommend rubber boots and gloves there you go somebody's gonna be like oh the power's off on this line here. Let me go check the fuse box. <laughs> I don't mess with the electricity at all when the family is at home. I make sure yeah. that that is planned when everybody's gone. Yeah, I'm not and... speaking from experience or anything. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, we are, we are. Yeah. So, so I, I just mess with outlets. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, fix an outlet here. You know, something cracked. Need to replace a switch or something like that. I'll do that. But anything bigger than that, I'll call somebody. Dude, I, I do want to replace a bunch of the um, light switches um, in my house with like you know Alexa connected ones or things like that. You. But, um, but yes, I get yeah, you. you know what I mean. Or even it just what the, any of the home automation systems. I yeah, yeah, yeah. The Apple but, one mostly. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I refuse. You just, I, you, I will burn my house Leo. down. Leo. Listen, all I'm saying is, Look, of, of all of the TV-connected devices that you could possibly buy, the Apple TV one is, is hands down, no question, the best one, because it's I'll, the only I'll one that doesn't show is. you ads. Doesn't I'll show you ads. Know. Now. I know. It doesn't show you ads now. They don't have like, to when they're charging you It's like Netflix didn't show you ads. It's like Amazon Prime didn't show you ads, and, and, and now they do, unless you know... You pay more each month. Pay the yeah. two. I was. But anyways, <laughs> we were switches. watching Prime the other night on the Fire Stick, and and I was complaining audibly about the ads on oh, Prime, yeah. and as though the thing heard me, it popped up a little dialogue asking me if I wanted to stop the ads. Only eleven ninety nine a month. Well, it, it was it was another two ninety nine a month. Oh, but it was. On top gross. of your Prime subscription, which yeah, is like 180 it was gross bucks, because it we'd been watching for hours, and then all of a sudden I'm complaining about these. Which, to be fair, the ads were really, really fast. They're really not all that intrusive. At they all. are. They yeah. are. But when in a culture where we just do away with the ads when we can, you know, it's we're just not willing to deal with it anymore. It's another new revenue stream, and they've latched onto it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. But yeah. anyways, with these switches, it's like, um, yeah, I could replace them. But like, for example, the one in my kitchen. So on the one side, it's a, um, a three switch. And then on the other side, one of the lights is controlled by another switch as well. Mm -hmm. that was so tight a single, though. 
So how do, how do I get a three over here and then a one over here using these um, connected switches? You don't. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're tying it into voice activation, then you don't need the second switch. You just yell. Yeah, unless I don't want to yell. Or you're... Every uh, time. Yeah, I was going to say, or if the internet is off, right? So, I mean... No, at that point, I, that's just a, that's just a inconvenience I'm willing to go with. Um, I will just say, hey, hey, Alexa, turn off the kitchen light. And I hope somebody's making a sandwich. Um, but, right, and then if the power is off or if I've lost internet or something like that, then I just get to walk over to the main switch and flip it off there. I think I would just take the inconvenience. Okay, so cap off all the secondaries because i got the same thing here in the living room yeah. with the main light so it's, it's simpler the one simpler over there solution and then a triple over there so. yeah because you're, you're going to be racking your brain about this and then it's going to semi work in some some instances and it's going to sem maybe work in others nah just take just take it out put a cool little picture of uh one of your daughters right there you know be great cover up that hole <laughs> But yeah, take the inconvenience. I, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm just okay with being inconvenienced for for things like that. Um, for random technological convenience. Yeah, I mean, like uh, turning off my alarm by yelling at it is fantastic, man. It's it's one of my favorite things to do now. Um, it's dangerous. No, I use I, I use my watch. Well, I do too. But the thing is, like, if I, it's so easy to tap the watch that if I don't wake up just enough to yell at it, like, because I have a I have a speaker box over here thing that I yell at. That's really what I yell at. Um, if I don't do that, then I'm not awake enough well, to roll I've, out I've, of bed. I've added like um, touch automation to like the lights in my bedroom because my wife will leave one of the lights on if I go to bed later than she does because she'll go to bed. She'll leave one light on so that way I can get to bed. But I don't want to talk to turn that light off because that'll wake her up. Mm -hmm. So I, I've created some automation on my phone where I can just, you know, tap, tap, turn off the, turn off yeah, the light yeah, that's right cool. from the home screen. That's cool. Well, tie those other switches in that way. So whenever, you know, any other, any other time, you just tap it on your phone. You're like, oh, I don't want to yeah, walk I'm the, the eight only steps. One, I'm, I'm the only one willing to go through the inconvenience of, of, you know, setting that up on my phone. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you'll be the, you'll be the master of your domain, right? Like turning off people's lights for fun. Like, it's time to go to bed. Uh. But I guess if I wanted secondary switches, I could always just grab some old phones or something and put them where the light switch was. Oh, and dude. then just have the only button on that screen be the... Or get some of those old, like, um, Amazon switches that uh, you could push to, to purchase your Tide or crap like that. Oh, yeah. And repurpose those and just... Now, and be, but that's a tactile button too, so I like that's the feel of it. Yeah. yeah, but I I totally envision now, right? Like you have uh, one of those old Android tablets that doesn't do anything other than mm -hmm. just it runs a switch app and it has every switch in the house and you can just kind of control it from right there. I like this. That'd be kind of cool, like man. This. You have a couple of those running in the house, right? Front front uh, front of the house, back of the house. So when you leave, you can you like, oh left that on, just click it from it. anywhere. Yep. Or it. and then also where you have those double switches. Uh, you know, have the whole panel there, just because why not? And then mm -hmm. flip off anything you want. That'd be cool. How about a refrigerator that orders milk for you? Nope, absolutely not. No, no do not order. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want. I don't want it ordering stuff for me because I, I guarantee you, like eighteen cartons of milk will show up one time and it'll be like, well, we thought you nah. were extra out. No. <laughs> Chat GPT. I don't. Not I was just gonna it. say, Chat GPT thinks you need more calcium. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'll say I don't it one day. Turning into Arnold. Yeah, I'll say, like, I'll, it'll hear me say one day, like, oh, my bones hurt. And it's like, well, that means he needs 20 gallons. Yikes. Yeah, I'm quite convinced. I used to preach again, because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that preach that stuff. Oh, these phones are listening to you, whatnot. Your TV's listening they to you. They are, though. That's the thing. They like, like are. not They absolutely are. Like, and... not in a conspiracy thing kind of way, but, it, like, it's listening for, uh, you know, hey, Alexa, change it to Channel 6. Right. Right? <laughs> Sorry, hey, Google, Channel 6 or You know, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. It's just, oh, gosh, why did I say that? Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on headphones, so as long as I don't say the S word, I'm good. Yeah, I have a different yeah. word. We just got to say it really loud. I have a different word. Oh, smart! I See, that's the word. Right, computer. Oh. But turn yeah. everything on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the that's the problem. I always use that word. Oh. Everybody's in my house is 
everybody in my house is used to it now. No, so. see now you you just got to think of a word that nobody would ever actually use, and even you if they had to use it, there is, you, and and the word is no, Bixby. You, you can't <laughs> set it to any word. You have to pick from the list. Oh, well, that's better than mine. You can't even change it. Bixby is a funny one because when I first got my phone, I'm still rocking this Note 10 Plus. Um, How many times have you said the word Bixby in context? Zero. Well, exactly. I don't know. Um, just talking about it. But when when I first got the phone for like the first couple of years, you could not get rid of Bixby. Um, that was right. whether you used the Google Assistant or not, you could not get rid of Bixby. And now they've made it to where you can. But I'm not sure if that's because... How gracious of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. thanks a lot for technology. I mean, do we own anything? Any of this stuff that we use, do we yeah. own it? Or are we just... No, we just rent it. It's yeah, all a subscription just, model. Now. And we're not even renting the equipment. We're renting the ability to use it. We're, well, here's, here's the thing. Like, So you own the hardware. You do not own the software on top of it, which is how they get you, right? So well, with you don't even I own device, the right to put your own software on it, is what well, I'm saying. Uh, no, to, you do. they're not going to come and arrest you. Like, you have the right to do that. Sure, they're going to make it hard for you. They're not going to give you the right to be able to unlock it, so people that jailbreak things are going to get in trouble. But once, once the jailbreak is out, it's out. They're not going to go around, you know, rounding people up that apply the jailbreak. So, I mean, you have the right to do it, but they're just going to make it very, very difficult for you um, in, in those cases, right? I mean, because the iPhone has historically been jailbroken. And then the... Uh, the Google stuff, that's the entire rooting and roaming community. That's a huge community. They still do that. But so, I mean, you own the hardware, but you don't necessarily own, you don't own the Google software and you don't own the Apple software. That's where they really draw the line and where you'll really get in trouble if you start messing with that stuff. And it's really d surprising how difficult it is for a lot of people to wrap their heads around that because it's always been that way hasn't it with with games and and software you didn't really you go to the best buy and you'd buy a piece of software you didn't really own the software you own right. even with nes games yeah even with nes games yeah. you owned the plastic cartridge but you did not own the software on top of it correct which means that you know you couldn't copy it and give it to somebody that it has ne was never yours to keep and do whatever with Right. So now, now we live in a world where companies are able. Well, the resources are such that companies are exercising their ability to revoke the license in certain situations, where we see like uh, software vendors and games just being completely removed from people's play queue and things like that. And right. What's What's funny to me is that that was a surprise to some people, right? That that, yeah. that like closed source software being angry at you for doing anything with their closed source software is like if that's not new, man. That was that was the original state of software, and then open source software came along, or free and open source software came along and changed that entire paradigm, right? So that's when it was it was new in the '70s and '80s when the FSF came out and said, you know, how about free for like all the ways that you could say free. Right. It's like that's that's what a lot of people believed was how it works with software in general since the right. beginning, you know, that yeah. that whole thing. But it was not. Well, we better wrap it up. Good show, guys. Oh, is that time already? Yeah, yeah sure fifty four minutes on the recording. Wow. Yeah. Hold this. on. I, I guarantee your audacity is behind mine though, because uh you're on Linux. Uh you, okay, you've drifted. So yeah. 54. No, you know what? 54, 54. I'm about wow. four seconds off, but usually when I do this, I hit the record on Audacity first and then on OBS Studios. Oh, uh, okay, so. okay. Yeah, I'm 5507, 8, 5508, 9, 11. There might be a slight drift there. Because I think at the end of a, a, at the end of a three hour recording, I think Dan will have only drifted about uh, two or three seconds total. I need to take the time because I've learned how to recalibrate the uh, the lag or the uh, what do they call it? The, well, we just do a three, two, one, zero at here at the end. Well, you can also you can set it your own recording in general by doing a uh, thing where you clap three times and then you play that back by holding your mic your headphones to the mic. Yeah, nah. We lose, we lose Joe with this shit every single time. But, I mean, it, it kind of, like, 
calibrates your own recording and then change the uh, the lag. What's the word I'm looking for? Not lag, but uh, delay latency. or latency mm. um, to match that to kind of like line it up, you know, and it makes it work a little bit better. Yeah. Anyway, let us awesome know what you shirt, think, Leo. folks. Ah, man, yeah. I haven't played D&D in a while. I need to play. Right on. All right. Well, let us know what you think. Uh, show at linuxotc.org. Hit us up on the socials. Comment directly on the website. We will be back in two weeks where I don't know if we'll have a full crew by then or not. But uh, yeah, thanks for we'll joining see. us, Joe. Um, Happy to help. We'll see you next time, folks. Until then, I've been Bill. I've been Joe. And I'm still Leo. See you later, folks. Bye.